Hey guys, welcome back to another quick video. Uh, today's topic is wire splicing. Uh, a common question we get is how do I split one wire into multiple wires, often for sensor grounds or five volt reference signals, uh, whatever it might be. But uh, today's uh, topic is gonna be how do you do that? What, uh, what splices do you use? How to crimp them? And we'll show you a few tips and tricks to uh, make life a little bit easier for you. All right, here are the uh, open barrel crimps, they're splices. Um, and on the website, we've got them. They're small, medium, and large. They're a, a TE product and they are made of brass. Um, they do come in a, a stamped strip. And so you break them off uh, individually and they look like this. You can see this small one's not much bigger than uh, the tip of that pen. So that's for splicing uh, very small wires, uh, you know, like 22 gauge wires together. So it's not, not as common as the medium and the large. But you do need to select the right one for the series of wires you're uh, splicing together. So in this case, you know, you've got a 16-gauge a wire and you've got four 20-gauge wires spliced to that. you got to pick the right one. Um, there's actually a complex, uh, kind of a complex uh, calculation to get it just right uh, based on circular mill area. However, uh, we actually put it into a table to uh, kind of simplify it for you and get you the right, uh, right splice for the job. So uh, we'll pop up that chart and show you uh, how to make the correct selection. So we put together this chart based on, um, you know, experience and also uh, the calculation of looking at your CMA, circular mill area. And if you look at the way this uh, stacks up, you can just kind of look on the left-hand column and you can select, uh, let's say, for example, we'll use, we're just going to split a 20-gauge wire into two 20-gauge wires. So uh, if you look at it on the left column, if you go to two 20-gauge and you go over on the, the top row, um, a single 20 gauge that's going to give you a medium splice so that's the one we would use to split that now keep in mind you can use splicing for anything you can take a 16 gauge and split it into four 20 gauge wires for let's say a injectors or coils or maybe you have a tps signal or five volt reference you want to split to several pressure transducers or to uh, TPS or whatnot, um, you know, you can you can get creative with all this stuff, of course, and when you build your har harness, you'll find that out. Um, most of you probably already done that. However, um, this, this chart really helps uh, to define what, what splice is going to be the best one. Uh, in the case where you see something that says M slash L, that means it's kind of on the edge of a medium and a large. I try to make the medium one work. I always try to make the smaller one work if possible. And the reason is, is because it makes a little less bulky um, splice. And when you go to heat shrink it, it looks a little bit nicer, a little bit cleaner. Um, if there is nothing in the cell, then that means that it's outside the realm of the splices that we're talking about right now. So we'll go ahead and proceed. Again, we're going to use a um, two 20 gauges that's going to go into a single or a single into two 20 gauges. And uh, we'll use a medium splice on it and see what we can come up with. All right, now that we have determined we need the medium sized splice, uh, we'll go ahead and get our wires ready. And uh, my rule of thumb is that I wanna strip the wire to be about 30% longer than the width of the splice. So in this case, um, just visually looking at it here, if we wanna strip a little bit more off. We wanna make sure that um, when we do splice it, that all the strands and the, con the conductors inside the, uh, the wire are showing on both sides of the of the splice so we don't want the insulation uh caught up in there at all we want to make sure that not only half the wire or i'm sorry the wire is only halfway in we want it completely captive with some showing on each side so we'll go ahead and uh, strip the wires accordingly okay so now you can kind of see what i was talking about you see the you see how it's longer than the width the stripped section of the wire is longer than the width of the splice, and uh, that's about right. We'll go ahead and get these spliced together. Now is a good time to discuss the crimping tool that uh, you use for that. This actually has a Delphi part number. It's a ratcheting setup here. Uh, it basically makes it so you only need like you know four hands instead of five hands to get the job done. It can be a little tedious to get all the uh, the wires into the the splice correctly. Um, you notice it kind of has like that W shape in there. Any tool similar to that should work. Um, if 
snippets for that. I've got a pair of these. It works. These are not ratcheting. They're much cheaper. Um, not really as nice of a tool, but uh, if you're not doing a whole bunch of them, it'll get the job done. Uh, so what I'll say, though, is take some scrap pieces of wire. You know, the little splice pieces aren't expensive. Whatever you're going to do, practice on them a couple of times. Uh, use a couple of different ones. Um, uh, make sure to give them a, give them a good... Uh, a good crimp uh, before you actually do it on your real harness, uh, whatever setup you're doing, whatever um, series of wires you're doing. I happen to know that the um, <clears throat> the medium splice fits well into the A spot, and it can be a little bit hard to actually get these in here even to start with. So uh, what I try and do is just kind of put them in the place right there and uh, kind of go like this to get them kind of centered in there side to side. And uh, what I'll do is I'll kind of get them to about this point here and then what I've found is that, uh, you know, the, the table is a good place to start and it's, it's pretty accurate, especially if you're using TXL wire. Uh, however, I found that if you can fit whatever wires you can fit in here, you know, whatever, however many wires you can actually fit in there, if you can fit them in in this configuration where they're kind of almost getting ready to start crimping, it should crimp okay. Now we're going to be looking for the crimp to fold all the way over and uh, kind of roll over on uh fold over on top of itself so i'll show you what that looks like here um let me get uh, get set up here to get these three wires crimped okay so in this case we are splicing uh two 20 gauge wires to a single 20 gauge wire uh just what we have picked to do um it doesn't matter what you're doing but uh i sometimes put a little piece of capped on tape here that way when you're trying to put it into one side of the the splice it's not trying to you know, go different directions on you. And um, one thing I'll say is I usually will take and I'll just kind of twist the individual wire just to make sure the uh, the uh, copper strands don't get uh, frayed out too much. But don't be tempted to, you know, twist these ones up because if you do, it kind of wants to pull on them, pull them kind of funky when you're uh, splicing them and kind of tug on it and maybe create a, a point where you can have a possible failure. So uh, don't twist these together, but you know, if you need to give each individual wire a little bit of a twist, uh, I find that that's helpful in keeping things from uh, getting too, uh, too rowdy when you're putting them into the, the splice. Um, but yeah, a little piece of capped on tape just kind of holds it together. You can pull it off later. Um, this is more for, more for just the fact that uh, I don't have uh, five hands. So uh, from here, we can go ahead and uh, insert into the splice and, uh, and crimp it down. Okay, we'll slide these two in from this side. And we'll go ahead and slide the other one in. And we'll try to kind of center everything up. It's going to be a bit tricky. Um, give this, just kind of hold it, make sure that, again, you want the uh, all the strands, all the conductors, all the way through each side. And then we want to, with these crimpers, you just go ahead and crimp them until you can't crimp anymore. And you should be hitting the, uh, the bottom of the, uh, the stroke here, and then it'll release the ratcheting. And we'll see, uh, see how well we did. Let's see what we got here. So you can see the strands are through, all the way through on both sides. And you can see it's kind of rolled all the way into a uh, kind of an M or a W shape there. And uh, I always say, um, give it a tug test. Uh, the reality is I've never had anything come apart that couldn't be tugged apart simply. So if it feels like it's gonna be strong with a little bit of a tug, it's probably not gonna come apart. If it's not uh, crimped good enough, it's probably gonna come apart without too much of a tug. So um, from there, we can go ahead and put a little heat, heat shrink on it. All right, I'll go ahead and pull that, uh, that little piece of capped on tape off. We. Uh, had it on there to uh, keep things in place, as you remember. And uh, we'll go ahead and slide a piece of uh, adhesive lined heat shrink on there. Get that into place. And then we'll go ahead and shrink it down. So there you have a single 20 gauge into two 20 gauge wires uh, split for whatever purpose but again the uh, the practice and application uh, you know goes for for any series of uh, wires you're trying to uh, splice or divide i want to talk a little about splicing small wires together so here is uh you know obviously you can see right here that really small splice and this is two 20 gauge wires that are spliced together um, I kind of made a term for myself that I use. I call this kind of a parallel splice where you're splicing two uh, wires that are kind of running parallel to each other by themselves. 
or you know a standard more like an in -seri a series type of splice or if you're you're splicing multiple then you kind of have a, a hybrid of both if you have a single in and, and two out like we showed before but um so i've got you know i've got kind of a problem getting my big meaty fingers on that little splice and getting it into the crimper and getting it properly crimped but I have another trick that I'd like to share today. It's I've never really seen anybody else do it, but uh, I found it works really good. However, if you're a space shuttle wiring guru, you're probably going to want to shut this off because you're probably going to say that uh, impending doom is coming and everybody's going to die. But here's the uh, here's what it is. Here you go, a free secret for today. So um, you've seen these before. This is a uh, like a terminal that goes into like a connector. Um, and there's multiple different types of these, but uh, the idea is kind of all the same. So here's what I do, especially if I'm doing a uh, kind of what I call my parallel splice and I do things, uh, you know, maybe I'm changing direction of a wire. I do that sometimes. Um, I put it in here, make sure that the wires are all the way through the, um, the area that needs to be crimped and uh, laying in there. And then I'll go ahead and come over here and uh, actually I'll flip that and give it a, a good crimp. There we go. That's the right one. Get into the center. Make sure I get that crimp tight. And then I'll come over here, kind of give that a squeeze. And uh, I think this is going to be here. All right. So then they'll fold those over. There we go. It makes a nice, uh, nice little strain relief for you. Okay, so you're like, well, you got this big connector on there. Okay, well, then this, then you bring in your your side cutters. And you just clip that off on the end. It shoots across the room for you to step on later. And then you've got a nice thing. You might want to come in here and kind of straighten this out a little bit, kind of get some rid of some of the sharp edges. But it actually works really well. Then you can bring your uh, your piece of uh, heat shrink in make sure it's plenty long because we want to make sure this is all sealed off drop it over that and then we'll go ahead and uh, hit it with the heat gun here's a little better shot of what it looks like once it's all crimped and ready to go so um, yeah you can do the same thing if you want to do it kind of in series so end to end like I talked earlier you just want to cut that piece off first um, and then you can use it uh, use it the same way. But uh, in this case, I cut it off second because it was just a little easier that way. But um, let's uh, slide this on. I always try and keep a little extra on the end so I can kind of pinch it off, and I'll kind of show you what that means. Um, pinch, the, pinch the end off so that it seals up. So we'll go ahead and come head over here to the heat gun. I'll come over here. This is adhesive lined also. So I just kind of give it a pinch there and it's, it kind of sticks itself together. And uh, there you have it. You have, uh, have another splice. And good to go. Hope this helps. If you have any questions, give us a call, shoot us an email, or check out the website. Also check us out on these social media platforms. Like, share, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever it deserves. And thanks again for the support.